Episode 27 is The Epic Quest of Unfathomable Difficulty. In this episode, Wanda and Sylvia go on a, well, epic quest of unfathomable difficulty to return a sock. This is a really good episode. It showcases a lot of the strange elements of the show, has Wander and Sylvia face off against a villain, and has a typical Wander over Yonder ending. The whole enchilada. Look, it's a desert skate park from the DSBT Insanity movie trailer. I shall do what I can to assist you all. First riff of the app and I'm already shoehorning in my own shit. <laughs> Typical watchdog accuracy, folks. I swear they make stormtroopers look like skilled marksmen. So, uh, hey, I couldn't help but notice, but you left me alone to deal with all those watchdogs. What's that all about? And how is that any different than normal, Syl? You expect Wander to help you beat them up or something? Sylvia? This is somebody's sock! That means that there's a sad, sockless soul out there! It's the Flying Dutchman's dining sock! He can't eat people without it! Haven't you ever lost something you wished you could get back? Yeah, my DSBT stuff. Like, my literal childhood right there. If we're gonna do a stupid thing, let's at least be smart about it! We'll leave the sock here. Whoever lost it will come find it. It's right there in the title. And that's what I love about this show. The characters actually try the most logical solution first. Sure, it never works, but at least they're practical about it. Well, unless they're Wander. I don't know. What kind of background checks do they run on people claiming lost items? Wander, you'd be surprised on how many jobs don't run background checks. If you think a facility that literally runs on the finder's keepers rule will do that, you must be dreaming. They'll definitely end up somewhere. Wow, people lose a lot of shit in this town. Few have survived. Those who have... We're driven to the depths of madness. Why? Is encountering Cthulhu part of this epic quest? Oh, no! Give me a pen. I gotta write all this down! Couldn't you just pull an index card out of your hat instead of writing it on your hand like an elementary school student trying to cheat on his test? First, you must brave the grizzly forest. So named for its fierce grizzlon population. Well, at least it's free of phantom mimes, right? <laughs> Oh wow, so they're bears made of darkness. That's about as scary as the grizzly bear from the Fox and the Hound. But beware the less famous, but equally deadly, giant horror scorpion! Well, when you take away that giant pile of bones it's standing on, it's honestly kind of cute in a creepy way. Also, look at those trees. They look two-dimensional. Like when I try to do a perspective shot in an anime studio. There you will find the key to the tomb of the unknown emperor. Wait, if he's unknown, then how can he have a temple in the first place? Where you will have to tame the fierce Tigrix of Nil! <laughs> hey, Emperor Awesome has two of those as pets! There you shall find a map leading to the Far Bricks Lava Drome! So you tell Wander, Serpent, Bridge, Lava Dome! Say it with me. <laughs> Oh, so they're in lethal lava land now. Rescue the fair Princess Galactia! Jeez, Doom Dragons are like Wander's foil in this season, huh? Wander, what the hell? You just threw the princess to her doom for a fucking sock? Oh, never mind. Thank Grop for Sylvia. She will lead you to the Infinity Crystals, which you must pry from the throne of the easily amused Dragor the Distractable. Let me show you how much of a snake I can be. Ah, oh, it's a crystal. Ah, oh, it's a quest. Oh, look, it's Psychium Z. Head to the Isophorium to rescue the unfair Princess Veronicron. Oh cool, are those ice fireballs it's shooting or something? You call this a rescue? Alright, Wander. Her you can throw to her doom. Resist the solar siren's sweet song. Yeah, not that hard to resist. Isn't that thing one of Emperor Awesome's groupies? 
Also, are they paddling a gondola through space like it's water? Survive the quicksand of forgetfulness! Wait, what were we doing? Oh yeah! Ah! Quicksand! Nature's deep is trapped! Also, it looks like melted butter. Humble yourselves before the legendary Neon Knight of Nalpraxis! Call me Jim! Wow, even his thick, luxurious hair is neon. And his greeting reminds me of Jeff, who we'll get to later. The Neon Knight shall join your party, but bore you with endless stories about old fishing trips. Damn, look at those monsters. Spiders, beetles, lizards, demons, snakes, two-headed birds, the whole nine yards. Now the thing you gotta know about your snook. Not the time, Jim! Damn, maybe haters should recruit those skeleton knights instead of watchdogs. And is Wander fighting off one of them with the sock? Don't worry, he'll find true love and you'll remember him fondly. Ew, he's with that bitchy princess instead of the red one. I miss him so much. How will we ever go on? We must! For the sock! Couldn't help but notice he's living in the castle from Disney World's Magic Kingdom. Answer the riddles three of the Blarnian Bridge Troll! So why does he have a key on his earring? Wait, does he lock his belly at night so no one can break through him? Cross the mountain pass without looking at the hippogriff. Why is the poor thing chained up to a cliff like that? Who decided to lock a wild animal in the middle of nowhere like that? No wonder it looks so pissed off. Stop at Bloyd's Diner. <sighs> Best blank salad sandwich you'll ever eat. Is that what that is? Because it looks like those wild blueberry pop-tarts if they were a sandwich. Discover the true secret was inside you all along. At the top of Mount Crumpet? Where the Grinch lives? I don't think so. After you climb the million, Quinquag into quadrigentillion steps. This calls for some appropriate music. Whoa, does he have three floating brains with gems embedded in them? That's pretty sweet. Is this your sock? Nope. Okay, thanks. Whose sock is this? Not, is this yours? Whose? Well, looks like Hater isn't the only one who wastes single wishes or ultimate questions. I don't recall you ever wearing shoes, let alone socks. So, I wear socks all the time. Hospital socks. Keeps my feet cozy and stops them from getting itchy. Stop! You're stretching it! You stop. You're gonna break it. This isn't just some silly sock. It's my best friend. That's ridiculous. You know it's my soulmate. Look at that! The return address was inside the sock all along! <laughs> isn't that hilarious? Who the fuck puts their address on a sock? Also, wouldn't that tag get itchy up against your feet all day? Holly Holly Oxen free! <laughs> Holly all the oxen free is a phrase used in hide and seek that tells everyone to come out of hiding. No idea what freeing oxen has to do with that. Tumbleweed! And that ball of plant stems ran away too! This place gives me the heebies with a side order of jeebies. You're getting way ahead of yourself there, Syl. The heebie jeebies isn't until the last act of season two. Is the choir saying, nope, 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 nope? Because that would be hilarious. That's an amazing evil castle too. The smokestacks really give it an industrial feel, the windows above the gate make it look like a mouth, and there's troops and tanks with spikes on them standing guard for good measure. That's how you do an evil lair. But if we go up there, we're gonna die! I can live with stupid! I can't live with death! Whoa, easy there, Sylvia. You know you're not supposed to say that word. You gotta say destroy, remember? You still have a chance to make it out alive, and you're already up there, aren't you? Yep. You should tell the cameraman to focus on Wander when you're telling him how stupid he's being. That way he can't do his off-screen teleportation shit. That's a pretty cool guard design. Although, how the hell does he hold that halberd with those stick limbs? That's a pretty cool villain design, too. Like an evil tiki thing. <laughs> there was so much I didn't get to do! Hang on, I'll transfer your call! Excuse me, Mr. Executioner, sir. Does the struck door have too few socks? Executioner design is pretty cool, too. They're just nailing these villain designs. 
He's even got that black mask thing, too. I thought that going out of your way to be kind to someone would always be worth the trouble. But I was wrong. And you were right. This is just a dumb sock. And it doesn't matter a lick to anyone. And all it took for you to finally realize that was being sentenced to death. This sock does matter to someone. To you! And I will not let this entire stupid quest be in vain! Why not? I mean, half of it was in vain already. <laughs> oh shit, prepare to get dominated. Aw, they look like that removed beta smorg from Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door wearing garbage bags. Who dares? I dare! Your overlord's got a birthday coming up. Any thoughts on what you might get him? La 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 la. <laughs> Aw, now he looks like Huckleberry Knucklehead in holy armor. And that toy tank is too dangerous for small children. If you're to rule this kingdom, you must put away childish things. Ooh, Daddy's got some sweet armor. The green diamonds really give it a futuristic vibe. I really hope that's mud. <laughs> Better be careful what you wish for, Daddy. <laughs> How does it feel to have an infant as an oppressive dictator? Thank you. Thank you for returning literally the most important thing in the entire universe! Wee -wee -wee. Oh, that's the hyperbole police coming to take you away and lock you up in exaggeration, Traz. Make him an Archduke! Wait, that's who you want to be your second in command? Over the sock? <laughs> So can this dude, like, terraform the planet based on how he's feeling or some shit? Like a mood ring version of the ancient gem? I just thought someone's foot might get cold. Yeah, well, you know how your show is with its weird cutesy 180 endings. Episode 28 is The Void. In this episode, Wander and Sylvia discovered an alternate dimension that is just, well, a void where you can control reality. This is a really good episode. Like, it's just so fucking weird and over the top, even by the show standards. It's also another episode that tests Wander and Sylvia's dynamic, and where Wander is completely in the wrong for once. Not even in the, your heart is in the right place, but you're still a fucking idiot wrong. But, like, actual wrong. Also, the song is pretty catchy, too. Oh, nice. A planet made of gold. Wait, what? Also, I'm digging the illusion of depth they are trying to do here with the reflected sphere thing, but it's just not really working. We're definitely opening this weird space door, aren't we? Oh, it's a door. How the fuck do you even find something like that? It's a thin outline with a tiny little knob in the vast cosmos. That's not something you discover on purpose. No chance of us just moving on, having a normal, relaxing, non-crazy day? Well, considering that would make for a really shitty episode, do you really need an answer to that question? Sylvia, this place is amazing! How is it amazing? It's literally nothing. Although at least there is a floor, unlike in Limbo. This isn't bad. It's not that good, but it's not that bad. It's so-so. Eh, more or less. Huh. So that's what the old caboose looks like. Hmm, not bad. We've all got a little junk in the trunk. Wait, are you saying you've never seen your own ass until just now, Sylvia? <laughs> Smooth and seamless animation, folks. Man, oh man, is this place great! Oh look, it's like when Chowder got his hand stuck in a machine and filled it with cream. <laughs> Don't make fun of rat shoes. To the carnival! Okay, that should be his look from now on. Like, the whole rest of the series he just goes around with that giant head, huge teeth, and derpy eyes. It never hurts to help! <laughs> okay, now you look like a weird garbage bag. <laughs> you keep a blimp inside your hat now? Sylvia, you don't climb it! Ew, it looks like a cross between a whoopee cushion and a boxing glove. <laughs> Great googly moogly. That I can be tartan too! You look like you're wearing the pelt of a set of bagpipes. Form of a red rectangle! Oh look, it's Max Brother's imaginary friend. Tio Tetrahedron. More like the center of a Minecraft beacon. Paisley Parallelogram! I tried to look up what the hell Hazily meant. 
but I just get a bunch of results for weed. So I guess that fits with the weird texture you got there, Wander. An orange spoon! Wait, won't that just turn you back to nor- oh. Uh, what the- It's called a hammer space, Sylvia. Your buddy has one right there on his head. You've just never been blessed with the gift. This place is bananas! Oh, banana. Totally nuts! And circus peanuts, too. Is- is that still a thing? Circus peanuts? Because all I've seen from them is that god-awful candy. It's crackers! What kind of brand is ML Red Circle Right Triangle? Completely batty! <laughs> Sylvia confirmed vampire. Absolutely loony! I'm... I'm not seeing the connection here. I just hope there's are white markings on that bird, not bullet holes where you can see the void right through. Time for water balloons! Water balloons are fun, but they're nowhere near worth the effort of setting up. You gotta stretch the balloon over the hose like you're putting a condom on it, fill it up, remove it without losing any water, and then tying it in a knot without hopefully dropping it. And that's one. <laughs> if I laugh at yours... Sure would be nice to know we're not stuck in the middle of nothing. And if you are, just do what Squidward did when he became trapped in a void. Stomp on the ground until you break through it. Honestly, of all the shows where time travel goes wrong and you end up in a weird dimension, why the hell was it SpongeBob? <laughs> You're tiny! And make your peace with your brand new scaled down dreams. You're so adorable, I could eat you right up! Literally! <laughs> it was on this day, Zbornax received a grim reminder. In all seriousness, I think it would be interesting to see how Wander would do in the Attack on Titan universe. Titans cannot be reasoned with and are like man-eating forces of nature. Sure, he could serve as a distraction like he always does, but there is nothing Wander could do to pacify them. I think that would put his morale to the test even more than Dominator would. Sylvia, on the other hand, I can totally see as a Mikasa-level badass just killing titans left and right. Lift me up! Maybe this place has a ceiling! I think this is the only time in fiction that the law of motion between a giant and a normal sized person is taken into account. It may seem like the giant moves their limbs just as fast as a normal person, but that's just relative to their size. It would be like riding one of those G4 spinning rides that almost made me pass out from riding one time. Whoa! Same goes for giants talking. That would destroy your eardrums. Although I don't know why it didn't happen when he told Sylvia he could eat her. Stretchy arms and extendo fingers! Stretchy arms and extendo fingers! <laughs> Sorry, it got really long. Still coming! That's what she said. Sorry, I just had to. In other news, it reminds me of when Jake tried to stretch his arm away from the candy zombie virus in that episode of Adventure Time. Hey! That's pretty good! Look! I'm trapped too! Oh god, mimes! The only mime in fiction that I never found creepy was... No, not Mr. Mime. Just look at Pokemon Stadium. <laughs> no, it's that cute mime girl from the Battle for Muni movie. She's just amazing. Okay! I was just almost crushed into a Zaburna cube! Now you know how those junkyard cars fell before they died a slow, agonizing death. We'll just blast our way out of here! Oh, let me help! <laughs> what is that, the soap bubble gun from Power Stone 2? That one looked like a sparkly flower. Oh yeah? Neat. Fun flamingo fact. They get their pink feathers from the keratin of the plankton in the food they eat. <laughs> Come on, door! Wow, all that effort to summon a door and you couldn't even imagine it unlocked? You want doors? I'll give you doors! <laughs> wow, where's that door sorting system for Monsters, Inc. when you need it? <laughs> Ah! 
Holy shit, that's a hardcore way to destroy doors. It's probably now best not to piss her off by going all scooby dooby doors on her again, Wander. You're the right door, right? Sylvia, it's not going to answer you. You're in a void, not Nobbs' door store. You finally found me. A talking door? Now that's a bit Alice in Wonderland-y, isn't it? Not until there are talking cars there aren't. They are in every other anime studio series but this one. And... Chase them away! Chase them away! I'm afraid I need some aid. Pink elephants on parade! Going on a tangent here, but was that sequence supposed to be wacky with the animators just going hog wild with no boundaries like this episode is? Or was it supposed to be fucking terrifying? Look at that fucking thing! It's a bunch of elephant heads with empty eye sockets combined into a giant that's marching right towards you! Oh my god! <laughs> Wait, you can't go in there. Just watch me. No, I mean you can't go in there because that door leads nowhere. Use the door next to it. Is that a watchdog? <laughs> wow. Well, why not just go through there? You'll be in Hater's bathroom, but it'll at least take you out of the void. Why does he even wear a shower cap anyway? He doesn't have hair. It's like Larry the Cucumber and his hairbrush. <laughs> choo choo, motherfucker. <laughs> oh look, it's Wander's beta design. I don't know why, but it seems like something you would see in Oddworld. Hey, it's Jack McBriar, Wander's VA. And Wander's got a very... Ren from Ren and Stimpy expression right now. Whoa, that looks like a giant germ. Better close it before you lose 500 life points. Uh, should we know who those two are? Are they like, the background music composers for this app or some shit? Pucker up, Sylvia. And there's Beta Sylvia. She honestly doesn't look that different. It's pretty much like if she unironically dressed up like how she was in The Party Animal. Thanks for watching Wander Over Yonder and for taking the time to still frame this. Aw, that's nice. Whoa, that's the look of a serial killer. <laughs> the being named Fred by our engineers enjoys moonlight strolls along the beach, reading, and mauling unsuspecting enemies with brutal efficiency. <laughs> Whoa, look at that! Fred must be hungry! I just want to sell you some insurance! Ew, a band-aid! Giant squid insurance? <laughs> Kinda funny, right? Hey, some people benefit from giant squid insurance. Like Toon Link, for example. Place will give us whatever we want! Yeah, it's like being trapped inside the Ideals version of Wander's hat. Oh no! Isn't it awesome? <laughs> Stop stealing Emperor Austin's material, you hack. That's all he's got since he's just reduced to Hater's rival next season. Also, I think I see Groot in the background. I don't think we're gonna get to leave until we both want to leave. <laughs> Good luck with that, Sil. Wander is a fucking contrarian with you. Well, I don't know I can do. Watch out, universe! Cause Wander and Sylvia are back in action? Huh, that's weird. Hey, didn't we already run past that couch chair and lamp? Eh, it's a cycle. What? Sorry, I know what you're gonna say. That's probably my favorite line in the episode right there. Wander is so used to being a fuck-up that he knows when Sylvia is going to scold him. <laughs> uh. <laughs> He's short-circuiting! I think you might have taught him too much. <laughs> You're not supposed to turn into a bunch of nonsense clones until season two. And what's up with this Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids garage band shit? Just take a step inside your mind! So is this what the inside of his mind is like? A bunch of color-coded clones of himself? I didn't expect anger to be there. Joy is obvious. Sadness is rare, but it's there. We've seen disgust and fear from him too. But anger? Well, actually there is a moment later on in the show where he gets legitimately pissed off, so I guess anger does belong. 
Hopefully Wander's Joy isn't a control freak, though. When you take a step inside your mind. I'm Spornax in my eyes, Wander, and this is Spornax in my eyes, Wander's Electronics. Like a psychedelic bumblebee. I don't think it's the bumblebee that's psychedelic here, Wander. Wander, Wander, whichever of these yous is you, I think you should maybe take five, pal. Well, whatever he took, Sylvia, it was way more than five. Okay, that's actually kind of creepy. He's literally making her his puppet. Reminds me of that Courage the Cowardly Dog episode with that puppeteer lizard. He turns Muriel and Eustace into puppets, and even though Courage ends up tricking him into becoming a puppet himself, Muriel and Eustace are still puppets. So at the end of the app, Courage has to act like they're the real Eustace and Muriel, and it's clear that it's about to drive him off the deep end. It's really one of the most fucked up endings of the show, and that's saying something. Don't be sad, don't be blue. What is your theater filled with? Ears of corn? Take it, sir! Uh, no thanks, I really wanna oh, go- Oh, just take a step inside! Okay, that's even creepier. Now he just transmuted her into a dummy and is essentially mind-controlling her now. Inside your- Oh, it's filled with wanders! Huh. All that imagination wander, and you still just used a bunch of palette swap versions of the same couple character models. You're spending so much time thinking about the things that you want to do, that you forgot all about me and what I want to- do do doodly do Yeah. And I'm real. Boom! There it is! Sylvia dropping that truth bomb on you, Wander, of what a selfish asshole you're being right now. Of course, when you're super into and passionate about something, it's possible that you might blot out the outside world and just want everyone to piss off so you can enjoy your thing. Can't come down too hard on Wander for that, I guess. A nine next banjo? For what? A banjo playing squid? Oh, a peppermint puppy? Well, there's already a cotton candy puppy in the Pokemon world with Swirlix. That puppy would have made a more appealing evolution than... This a radical radish. is he so radical that his mouth goes all the way around the circumference of his head body? A sweeping lemur. Oh my god, that's fucking adorable. Those tiny hands, those big eyes, those little ears. A sun that compliments you on your hat. Nice hat. Is that hat complimenting sun supposed to have rays that look like spurting blood too? But I can't imagine a better friend than you. I hope you were talking to Sylvia and not that doorknob. Nope. That's totally my reaction, too. Besides, it's been 11 minutes. Your window of time is up.